Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to simulate a water bottle emptying. Uh, this is my first uh, multi-phase tutorial on this channel and uh, we'll be using the Interfoam solver which uh, simulates two, uh, two phases using the volume of fluid me fluids method that uh, tracks the interface between the, the two phases. Um, so as usual, this case folder contains all of the OpenFoam configuration files. This is a clean script for your convenience to restart a simulation. It removes all the generated files. Uh, the, mesh, the mesh folder contains the gmesh script to generate our water bottle mesh. Uh, this just has basic instructions and this run.sh script uh, is all you need to go from cloning this repo to uh, getting a simulation result. So as usual the github repo link is in the description and you can simply clone this repo and run the run script and have a um, have a solution. This one does take a while since it is a time dependent uh, solution. Um, for me it took like uh, 30 minutes or so maybe an hour to to finish it um, running on a single laptop processor. Um, so, yeah, so uh, let's look at the mesh. Uh, so here we have the geometric parameters. Um, we have a, uh, it's this very simplified geometry, a bottle radius, a bottle length, a nozzle radius, uh, which is the, the opening, the radius of the opening of the bottle and the taper length which is simply uh, uh, the length of the length between the the opening of the bottle and the rest of the body of the bottle um, and this is our simulation domain we don't need to make it that large uh, since we don't really care about what's going on in the air around the bottle we just are principally concerned with the motion of the water as it exits the uh, the opening and the motion inside the bottle, of course. Um, these are grid parameters. So this is inside the bottle and this is outside the bottle. Very simple. Um, we have our, this is an axisymmetric simulation. Uh, so this is our wedge angle, which is required for open foam simulations. They, they specify a five degree wedge when doing axisymmetric simulations. And so, all right, so this is the actual mesh here. Um, it's a pretty short script. Um, so this CE stands for current entity. Uh, I just use it for convenience to simply, because Gmesh takes uh, integer identifiers whenever you make a point, like here. You point, and then this is the identifier that this point will be identified by. And they also, it's also used for lines here. Uh, plane surfaces, line, so-called line loops. Now these line loops are, you need to make them out of lines in order to make a surface. So you can see I create this line loop and then use the line loop uh, in to create the surface. Um, so yeah, um, going back, uh, here I, I specify these identifiers to like keep track of, um, of particular points. So for example, this point I created, I so first I specify, I make the surface for the inside of the bottle, then the outside of the bottle. Now we, I do this separately because we need to have separate regions for the inside and outside of the bottle so that I can, I can identify the inside part as a, as a named region that I can refer to in the open foam configuration files in order to initialize this region with uh, water. Um, so we'll, we'll go over that later. So anyways, um, I want to refer to this particular point, which is the center of the opening of the bottle. Um, uh, so I name it and then I, I can refer to it later. So here you can see I refer to it uh, as part of, as part of uh, making the lines for the outer domain. Um, so yeah, it, it's 
after that, after you specify the the inside of the bottle uh, and outside, um, you take the surfaces that were created and rotate them at a wedge angle divided by two so that you can extrude it to five degrees with the with the uh, XY plane going through the center of the wedge um, and then you simply extrude the rotated um, plane uh, surfaces by by the wedge angle to get your actual wedge ang wedge volume and now uh, all of the created entities. So when you extrude something, you know you create you create new lines, you know, and new surfaces. Um, and this is all captured in GMesh. Uh, is is um, output by the extrude command, and I've captured it in this domain entities variable. And then I refer refer to it here um, to specify the physical surfaces. So we need to specify the wedge surface, uh, the two wedge surfaces, and then. Our simulation simply has walls, you know, the bottle, the wall of the water bottle, and uh, the walls of the domain. Um, I just make the domain walls just for simplicity. I mean, you could have easily made them uh, inlets uh, or outlets or whatever. Um, and so this is the interior of the water bottle that I've specified as the volume, and the the rest. Okay, so let's take a look at the at it. let's visualize the mesh uh, let's see here alrighty let's so you can see it's a wedge here a simple wedge and we've got one slice of the water bottle. You can see the mesh is finer. I mean, the overall mesh is, is quite coarse. Um, but you can see it's fine inside the uh, bottle where we want to track the interfaces between water and air. And then it's very coarse here. Water spills out here, but we don't really care what, what happens to it. So I, I made the mesh very coarse. Um, yeah. So that, that's it. This is the bottle wall. As you can see, it's a very simple bottle geometry. Um, and uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, just for completeness, I can show you the... If you go to Tools Visibility, you can verify that the surfaces you specified are indeed the ones you want. Um, so here we have the bottle interior. Here we have the rest of the domain. Here we have the uh, the first the first uh, wedge surface, and then the second one. You could see that they are they are the uh, sort of the the wedge main surfaces. Uh, so this one was the one we originally created, then rotated, and this is the one that was created by the extrusion. And now we have the walls, of course, which is the outer domain and the water bottle itself. All right. So with that done, <coughs> you can simply uh, uh, call run, and it just begins running. But uh, this takes a while, so I've prepared some results for you to watch here. And uh, as you can see, it's a it's a it's pretty neat to like sort of see everything that goes on inside the water bottle. Um, I mean, I'm I'm sure. All of you have emptied a water bottle at some point, and this looks uh, this looks very reasonable as far as uh, th this is what we would expect. So, oh, I forgot to actually I forgot to go over. Let me let me backtrack and go over the case configuration files. So here we have um, in our initial conditions we have. Um, Two new things compared to our typical external or our typical aerodynamics uh, tutorials, we have this PRGH, which is gravitational, uh, basically um, uh, pressure due to gravity, um, and the alpha dot water, which is the the phase component, uh, the 
phase component of water. So, so for example, an alpha value of zero would mean air, and an alpha value of one was, would mean water, would mean 100% water. An alpha value of 0.5 would mean in that cell, there's, it's half water and half air. Um, here we have one of my Ubuntu apps going crazy on me. Huh. Oh well. Let's see if I can just, yeah. All right, there we go. Um, so we can go, if we go to the constant folder, we can look at other properties such as uh, gravity. Um, we could specify uh, uh, the behavior of water in space by setting the gravity to zero. Um, well, or we'd also have to specify um, no air, uh, but uh, I guess you, if, if you just simply put zero gravity, it would be like water on the ISS, on the International Space Station, which of course, where of course there is air, since people live there. Um, the transport properties, now this is where we actually define what the two phases are. Uh, constant transport properties, and we've defined it as water and air. And these names, um, you know, correspond to these definitions. So um, we've defined this water key as actual water. Uh, the, kinem the dynamic viscosity, or the kinematic viscosity, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's the dynamic? Uh, one of those two. And the density. Um, yeah, and so these are the properties consistent with water and air. Um, yeah, and that's it for that. And we've this is a simple uh, um, turbulence model specification. I actually don't know if Interfoam uses a turbulence model. Oh, it does, of course. I mean, as we could see. Uh, it used to be that, uh, I, I think it used to be that Interfoam did not take a turbulence model, but here you can see it's solving for K and Epsilon when you run it, so it must be, uh, it must be using a turbulence model. It, that used to not be the case, though. I think they had a separate, like, RAS Interfoam for Interfoam with turbulence model, but now I guess it's all together. Uh, okay, now let's look at the system. Now this is a really important, uh, uh, this has really important files, so um, different from our usual is this set fields dict file. Um, so we here we name the region, remember I, I named in the GMesh script, I named my region, my water region, the interior of the bottle, just simply interior, and then this requires an inside point inside that interior for whatever reason, I'm not too sure. And then here's where you can specify the scalar field value, in our case, uh, alpha dot water. I've set the default to be zero everywhere, which is, which is just air. But for this region, for the cell region, um, interior, I have specified it to be one, which is all water. So that's, that's where you see, that's how you can get uh, the setup uh, for this case, where the, the bottle starts out full of water. Um, and yeah, now I think we can go on and fully appreciate the, the results here. So you can see the interface is tracked explicitly. Um, the, the interface is kind of fuzzy because we are using coarse cells, but, uh, but it's still tracked, um, to reasonable, you know, it at least looks reasonable. And, um, you can see that uh, it, it looks very much like what what we uh, what we can see uh, in real life when, when emptying a water bottle. You have this alternation of emptying of water and inputting of air, which greatly slows down the you know net uh, emptying rate. And uh, yeah, um, so a next tutorial might be to initialize this body of water with a swirl component of velocity, which would simply be a velocity going into or out of the screen. Uh, 
And then, uh, as, as you might have seen, um, a water bottle emptying with, uh, by first spinning it so that a vor vortex is created, it empties much faster. Um, presumably because the water and air, there's uh, the vortex core allows air to come in. Uh, and they can, and the water and air can uh, can enter and exit at the same time, without having to alternate. Um, uh, yeah, so that might be another interesting case to do with this. Um, I guess you could also use this case as a starting point for simulating what sort of nozzles um, would be good for uh, flow rate. Um, maybe you want to simulate like a garden hose uh, nozzle uh, by also um, uh, initializing this with some pressure or something and you know making it a or, or a pressure source actually um, pressure boundary condition I mean um, or velocity boundary condition that that would work too um, yeah, so I think that's all there is to this tutorial. Um, it's just a neat little foray into multi-phase simulations. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section, and thank you for watching.